Hello everyone, my name is Rosa Limana and I'll be presenting The Muslim Women Still Need Saving by Lila Abu Longhood. So I'm going to start by giving you a little bit of background about the author. Miss Lila Abu Longhood, she was born in October 21, 1952. She's an American with Palestinian and Jewish ancestry. She's uh, currently right now a professor of anthropology and women's and gender studies at Columbia University in New York City. She's also a specialist of the Arab world. Her seven books, most based on long-term ethnographic research, cover topics from sentiment and poetry to naturalism and media, from gender politics to the politics of memory. And here are some of the books she has uh she has um, wrote. Let me give you a little bit of background about this book. Um, this book is based of uh, an ethnographic study. It also uh, uh, answers the questions on how we should think about the question of Muslim women and their rights. How easily people presume that Muslim women do not have rights. How women are oppressed, but is the reason Islam or government. It also talks about the identity as a Muslim, deeply meaningful to women and their faith in God, which is the key to her sense of self and community. And also, it talks uh, about after the attacks of 9-11, the images of oppressed Muslim women became connected to a mission to rescue them from their culture. The main arguments of um, the book are, it, it explores the ethics of the current war of terrorism, focuses on post-9-11 attacks, investigates the dynamics of gender in question of women's rights in the Middle East, white Western feminism, which is ethnocentric, replicates colonial power structures. The Western framework focuses on religion, cultural explanations rather than political and historical explanations. Framing Muslim women as a need of saving works to justify Western interference, military intervention, and military occupation. It is important to be relative when talking about what women want, but being relative does not absolute the West of his participation in the history of violence in the Middle East. And these are some keywords on throughout on the book, which I think is important. Cultural relativism, Muslim women, Afghanistan war, freedom, global injustice, colonialism, war on terrorism. So I'm going to start talking about the cultural explanations and the mobilization of women. So colonial feminism talks about liberating women has been used to justify colonial ambitions. British rule in Egypt focused on the bell as a sign of oppression but gave no support to educating women. There's a speech of Laura Bush enlisting women to justify the bombings and innovation of Afghanistan. And I think um, there's an important quote to this um, in the book where the author says, the reason respected for differences should not be confused with cultural relativism is that it does not preclude asking how we living in this privileged and powerful part of the world might examine our responsibilities for the situations in which others in distant places have found themselves, page 787. And also, there's a short statement where it says throughout the book in page um, 487, white men saving brown women from brown men. And I think this is a really great cartoon where it, sh uh, it talks about and it gives you 
and it gives us a little bit of an idea of the topic of this book. So, colonial fem feminism is the expressing concern of well-being of women in order to further colonial interest. And a good quote on, in the book about this is, Instead of questions that might lead to examination of internal political struggles among a group of Afghanistan or of gl global interconnections between Afghanistan and other nation states, we offer ones that work to artificially divide the world into separate spheres, recreating an image geography of West versus East, us versus Muslims, cultures in which First ladies give speeches versus other in which women shuffle around silently in burkas. And this is uh, found in page 31 and page 32 of um, Long Hood's book. Let's talk a little bit about um, the bales. So the author, she argues that we need to work against the reductive interpretation of bailing as the question essential sign of women's lack of freedom and that we must take care not to reduce women to a single item of clothing so the different meanings and symbols about the um the bailing uh in the book um long who stated that bailing could symbolize a woman's modesty or respectability, mark the separation of men's and women's domains, represent the association of women with family and home, provide portable seclusion, protect women from unrelated men, signify belonging to a particular community, mark class, education, or profession, or represent piety. So beyond the rhetoric of salvation, the construction of a gang woman as people in need of saving is problematic. Efforts to save other women rely on and reproduce a sense of Western superiority. And a good quote that uh, supports um, this um, through the book is, uh, a more productive approach, it seems to me is to ask how we might contribute to making the world a more just place. This is on page 789. She, um, the author also asked through the book, can we use a more egalitarian language of alliances, coalitions, and solidarity instead of salvation? This is found in page 789. Some interesting quotes um, through the book. I think uh, it is, you know, one of them is found in page 493. It says, a more productive approach, it seems to me, is to ask how we might contribute to making the world a more just place. A world is not organized around strategic, military, and economic demands. A place where certain kinds of forces and values that we may still consider important could have an appeal and where there is the peace necessary for discussion, debates, and transformations to occur within communities. Also on page 490, it also says, perhaps it is time to give up the Western obsession with the bail and focus on some serious issues with which feminists and others should in need be concerned. Another interesting quote is also found in page 783 mm -hmm. where the author says, as a feminist or simply as people who have concerns about women's lives, we need to be wary of this response to the events and aftermath of September 11, 2001. I want to point out the minefields, a metaphor that is sadly too apart from 
for a country like Afghanistan. With the world's highest number of mines per capita of this obsession with the plight of Muslim women. Moving forward, Longer presents ways of approaching the issues of women, cultural relativism, and problems of difference. Western feminists should buy into colonial feminism and need to look closely in what they are supporting and why. We have to accept the possibility of difference. We have to work hard at recognizing and respecting differences, but as products, as different histories, as expression of different circumstances, and as manifestations of differently structured desires. And some questions that I'm going to leave to y'all. Uh, well, there's a quote that can help you, you know, answer these questions. If we think that you as women live in a world of choice regarding clothing, all we need to do is remind ourselves of the expression, the tiny of fashion. What do you think is the connection between Muslim wearing the bell and how American fashion leads to how women dress? Does one have a choice and the other not? Why is that we never question and think about how the women see the problems they are facing. Why do we never ask what do they say they want? From what, if anything, do Muslim women need to be safe from? Based on the question of uh, on the question and the title of the book, what role should the U.S. play in saving them? So these are my sources. And thank you all.